right, so this recipe is, they're basically like a, a raw, um, sort of meat-like whatever kind of thing. So you could call it like a meatball, you could call it a falafel, you could call it in India, you could call it a pakora or pakoda. They say it both ways with an R and a D. And whatever you want to call it, it really depends on the spices that you want to put in there. So it's all the same thing. And this, this is going to be a pivotal uh, recipe for um, other stuff that I'm doing. So um, I'm going to refer back to this one a lot with some of the recipes I've got coming up. So anyways, I got a, um, a bunch of onions that I already did up in here. This is four of these size onions here, kind of large-ish. And then I got, here is like four and a half cups, three of these one and a half cup things of uh, seeds that I soaked last night and sprouted today. So they're not that sprouted yet. So we're going to use these in here. And that's probably good for now. So that was uh, roughly... Um, Probably three cups, so I don't know where this is going to go. Simple recipe. You want to take this all the time, scrape the sides down and push it back in. We're basically going to make something that's going to look like bread dough. So you just keep turning these over, keep scraping the seeds in. turn over anymore so you add a little just a little bit of liquid and this here is uh, pot arco and cat's claw and I do this in all my dehydrators pot arco cat's claw tea I use this all the time instead of water because it gives a longer shelf life and when it goes in the dehydrator um, it prevents uh, bacterial mold all kind of that kinds of stuff so we're just going to add a little bit of that in here to get it to turn over Okay, so that's pretty okay with the consistency that you want there. Just kind of like a bread dough, there's few, still a few like loose pieces in there. And if you wanted to take that all the way to a consistent dough, this, is, this recipe is basically a, a technique. So I'm going to put that in there. I'm easily going to go ahead and use all the rest of this. I'm going to do one more batch of this. Anyway, so um, now we're going to do, so this is uh, chia seeds. I had a quarter cup. This is the basic recipe right here. From this point, you could just mix it up, um, scoop this stuff up, you know, mix it up, put it in the dehydrator, and it's good. So everything from now on, is every single step in here is optional. It is good to go ahead with the chia seeds though. Chia seeds add like the, a good fat profile in there, omega-3s and all that kind of stuff. And, and they kind of help hold it together, but this will hold together by itself. So, Um, I'm kind of switched to a Nutra, uh, Nutra bullet thing because it's kind of it has some pluses to the Vitamix, not the least of which is that you can grind stuff up and then take it off and shake it up, so you can kind of get stuff done faster in a certain way. I'm going to be using. in there. That's just all that chia seed goo, kind of. So, this recipe is also like clean out the refrigerator recipe. So from this point, aside from the spices I'm going to put in there, you can also put a lot of other stuff in there. So, um, I'm going to put like some jalapeno peppers in there. That's to your taste. I'm going to put some celery in there. And I'm probably going to put some parsley. You can put just lots of veggies in there. you got enough chia seeds and sunflower seeds to hold 
together. Everything else you can put in there however you want. Okay, so this is, um, what was it? This was the, the uh, four large onions, um, the four and a half cups of sunflower seeds, which were four and a half cups before they were soaked, so they swelled up. Uh, the quarter cup of uh, chia seeds with a bunch of water grinded up in there. Then I emptied out my refrigerator with half a celery, a bunch of parsley that was starting to get weepy. And again, the basis of the recipe is just a lot of onions and a lot of that sunflower sprouted mush. So now I'm going to add spices. Um, this is to taste. That's roughly um, two tablespoons of turmeric. Going to do about a quarter a uh, cup of thyme. All this stuff is from Mountain Rose Herbs. It's all organic. It's a place to get this stuff. It's really expensive if you buy it in the store in the little three and a half ounce bottles. Most of this stuff is all seven bucks a pound, especially the leafy ones, the thyme and the oregano. Seven bucks a pound. You get a couple pounds at a time. Uh, about a quarter, quarter cup of oregano. Everything spicy. I don't understand why raw fooders go for these little teaspoons of things. All of Asia eats tons of spices, and they're very nutrient dense. I don't, I don't really get that. Um, cumin to taste, kind of. I like a lot of it, so that's about an eighth of a cup I just did there. Probably about three heaping tablespoons. Um, salt, pink Himalayan sea salt. Um, you can put some minerals in there if you want. This is all optional, so I'm just put a little bit of minerals in there. Um, gonna go. Want to empty out this bottle? There's a little bit of that. More minerals, actually. So, okay. So the only way to like really turn this over, oh, a oh, little bit of olive oil. So I'm doing probably a good like eighth of a cup or more of olive oil in there. That's good. Okay, so now I'm going to get my hands in there. It's the only way to really turn this over. You don't want any pockets of stuff in there. Okay, so here's uh, this all done. Um, and there's a few other things you could add to here that I didn't, just because I'm taking this to uh, uh, this particular portion. If I was making this all for myself, I would put tonic herbs in here, like this. Astragalus, you can get this from Mountain Rose Herbs for like 14 bucks a pound. Amazing. But... I would put like probably half a cup in there if this was all for me. So I'm actually, this particular batch is going to a picnic with some friends who I just want to make it taste good. So here's the deal. You take this scooper and a lot of people I've given this recipe to, they try to roll this up with their hands. No. You go to a KitchenAid store and you get one of these. It's a melon ball scooper or whatever, a half ounce ice cream scoop, just like that. Don't change, don't miss this step and try to do it any other way because they don't turn out as good with the same consistency. So you put on the dehydrator tray and actually this dough because when you buy uh, Excalibur dehydrator you don't get these Taflex sheets like this you only get the screen so you actually could put this right on top because it's dry enough if you don't have those but I just go ahead and do this and so you just lay all of this out just like that. And then you just fill that tray up all in a row, just like that. And you don't really need to worry about how clean it is. That's so if you look at these, a few of these you can get real. These are the ones I did really fast. So if you want to get them like really clean like this, this is how you do it. So you get it in there and you just pack it in there. And then you like scoop up the sides. And like any stuff that's hanging over, you just like take it with a knife and you just push it in there. And make sure it's like nice and compact. And then you clean it off before you put it down. So it looks just like that. And then you'll get a nice, if you're going for the total look on it, you'll get a nice perfect one. So. I am going to fill up the whole tray. And then this is going to go, and I'm going to get a couple trays out of this, and then it's going to go in the dehydrator somewhere between 110 and 118. Um, there's a whole technique with the dehydrator that um, they say that within the, when you're doing raw food, 
to avoid all the bacteria and stuff that could happen in there that you crank it all the way up for an hour or two to get a shell on it so it protects itself. Um, but I don't do that because I did the Pot Arco Cat's Claw Tea, which eliminates all of that problem. So you don't need to do that. You just go somewhere between 110 and 118. And then the other thing I'm going to do, I'm not going to demo it here, is you can take some of these um, uh, pa pa blanc, pa blanc, Poblano, Poblano, Poblanos, chilies, cut them in half and then stuff them. I'm not going to do it here on this one. I'll do that some other time. And then you can do the same thing with the jalapenos, is just cut them open, scrape out the seeds, and then stuff them. And you can do that with sweet peppers or whatever. So, anyways, uh, this is my whatever you want to call them. They're either falafels, meatballs, pakoras, uh, whatever. And, um, you know, and then of course, okay, so I'm going to dehydrate them overnight. And then I'm going to pull them off the, uh, the paper. And then I'm going to put it directly onto there. And they're actually at that point, they're more or less ready to go. You just get the bottom a little dried and then you just run them another hour or two. So, you know, whatever you sleep, six to eight hours is fine. First thing in the morning, you get up, you pick them up, and then you put them all on a new tray on this stuff. And then they're ready to go. Put them in the refrigerator. You can have them for six, seven days for a lot longer because they have a lot longer shelf life, again, because of the Pot Arco, key, Pot Arco Cat's Claw Tea. This is what um, they look like in a plate. Um, that's them there, I'll show you. I'm sitting here blogging. I'm trying to blog more. You're working on music. It's Mark behind me, uh, a friend of mine, a bandmate in Second Culture. And that interesting instrument that he's playing is called the Chapman Stick. Anyways, I just wanted to wrap this up. So here's what these things that I made look like. Um, you can see that they kind of look like meat, sort of. So, um, anyways, when you put them in the refrigerator, if you haven't dehydrated them all the way, the refrigerator has this effect on, like, bringing the inside moisture back through the whole thing, and it has this lovely, lovely taste. So, um, they are totally awesome. This is an interesting Thai dressing, which I'll give you a recipe on. And so amazing. And so the context that I'm eating these in, I got two dressings here. I got the Thai dressing, which I took to the picnic yesterday that I was telling you about. This is total old school raw here. It's got a bunch of miner's lettuce that I got from my backyard. Um, some sprouted garbanzo beans. Um, some sprouted uh, fenugreek seeds and um, this dressing on one side and then another dressing that I made which is um, based in sprouted, not sprouted, fermented veg and uh, sprouted garbanzo beans and it's got um, smoked paprika in it and astragalus and cumin and coconut butter and so I will often do this of where I split it up with for more variety um, so anyways that's the recipe um, my next upload is going to be about um, uh, some of the questions that you've asked me about energy work and I did definitely want to get on with a video sooner down the road also that's about my take on how to be a healthy um, raw vegan but to sustain it over the long term and by the long term I don't mean five years I mean, what I consider a lifetime. So anyways, this is Keith. Bright blessings. Um, wishing you all the best. And I will talk to you later, okay? Bye.